Hi there, fifth wheel owners. Today in your 2021 Van Lay Beacon, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install Hydrostar's disc brake actuator. Along with this actuator, we're going to be using Hydrostar's line kit here with flexible lines and hard lines to reach our actuator and Kodiak's disc brake conversion kit. And this is what our actuator looks like when it's installed. It can mount anywhere inside of our front compartment here. It is recommended to be mounted inside to protect it from the elements. This is going to pressurize the fluid on our line set to the brakes at the back to apply our brakes. It does this when it receives a signal from its brake controller. The brake controller on your truck does need to have an option for an electric over hydraulic system in order to work properly with our actuator here. We have a lot of different brake controllers here at eTrailer so you can pick the best one for your particular setup depending on how many axes you have. The one that I like the best is Taconscious P3. It's got a lot of different options on there. It works with electric over hydraulic, and you can save profiles for different trailers. So if you've got your camper trailer here that you like to roll around with, or maybe you like to do some work with a different trailer, you could set up two different profiles and have it ready to go for this one or your other one with push of a button. Getting this actuator installed is actually fairly simple. There are four holes in the actuator that you'll use to secure it to your compartment in here. There's a lot of different areas you can put it, so that kind of just depends on where you want your actuator. I do recommend putting it in a place where you've got enough room to easily fill the fluid on top. That's why we chose above our compartment here. We did place a piece of wood underneath of it because we attached it to such a thin piece of metal here. And then we just drilled through the wood and the metal and then used uh, hardware here to secure it. We have to provide our own hardware. We're just using some quarter inch hex bolts and then we use a flat washer, lock washer, and nut to secure it. On the inside here, we put fender washers because of that thin metal. If you were mounting this to a thicker metal, you could probably omit that to just a regular washer. The actuator here is gonna send pressure out the back, so we need to connect our line to it. This will connect with a 3 8 inch line wrench, and then you also wanna use a 9 16 wrench to hold the nut here when tightening this down, because we don't want our actuator, here. we don't want this to twist inside of our actuator. This line will then route towards your brake assemblies at the back so you can make your connections back there. To make our actuator work, we have four wires coming out of it. Your black wire is your power wire. Your white wire is your ground wire. The yellow wire is your breakaway switch input. So if your breakaway switch pin gets pulled, it'll send a signal to this to activate it. And the blue wire is the brake actuator wire. This is the wire that comes from your seven way. That's gonna get a signal when you press the brakes and that comes from your brake controller. Our seven-way connector comes in right over here. This is from the front of our trailer, the seven-way connector here. This is where it comes in. So we just took the blue wire out of here because that's our brake controller wire from the seven-way and we just cut it. We left the existing wire that goes to our brakes in there. We just wrapped some tape around the top there, but it's no longer connected so it shouldn't do anything. And then we just connect that to the blue wire here on our actuator. That's gonna get our signal from our brake controller. This white wire here is actually a ground wire that was for the trailer brakes, but since we don't have electric brakes anymore, we no longer need that ground wire for the trailer brakes. And this white wire here is already routed up to our seven way at the front. So we connected our white wire to it, and then up at the front, we can disconnect it from ground and connect it to our breakaway switch. So then we connected our yellow wire to this, and we're then gonna head up to the front where we connect this white wire here to our breakaway switch. So here's our white wire. It was actually originally connected to the stud right here with a ring terminal, and it was labeled. If we look here, this one here says trailer ground. I already cut the end off here, but this one did say trailer brake ground. And again, we don't need trailer brake ground anymore because we're not ha we don't have electric brakes. We have hydraulic brakes now. So this blue wire here, if we follow this, this runs right over to our breakaway switch. Our black wire here is the power wire powering up the switch, so we need the output from the breakaway switch, which is this blue wire here. So we took that trailer ground and just connected it there with a the heat shrink butt connector. I recommend heat shrink butt connectors. Since this is outside of our compartment, we want to seal this up to ensure that we don't get any moisture in there, and that way we'll have a nice long-lasting corrosion-free connection. After removing the covers from our battery compartment here, we can hook up our power and ground. Those are the two remaining wires on our circuit here. Our white is our ground, and our black is the power. In line on our power wire, we put a circuit breaker. This is a 40 amp breaker. You can get this here at E-Trailer. That'll protect our circuit from any shorts. So we just go from the actuator here to a ring terminal to the silver post on our breaker. Then the bronze post, we just put another small ring terminal on it. And this wire runs around over to a large ring terminal that connects to the positive on our batteries here. 
The white wires being ground, we just ran this down. It wasn't quite long enough to reach the ground on the battery, so we attached it to a ring terminal and then grounded it with one of the screws that we used to secure our uh, circuit breaker here. We then took another wire out of that ring terminal and extended it and brought it over to our ground here directly on the battery to make sure that we've got good power and ground connections because this actuator can draw a lot of juice so it's important to have a good connection uh, to ensure that you're going to get as much power sent to it as it needs. Now that we've got our actuator fully installed here you can go ahead and finish up installing the rest of your electric over hydraulic conversion there and once you've got all those installed you just need to bleed the brakes. We'll walk you through bleeding the brakes once you've got all your components installed, we do need to bleed the brakes to get all the air out of the system. So that way when our actuator here applies, we've got solid fluid pressure all the way back. If there's any air in it, it'll compress and you're gonna get uneven braking. And it's also gonna reduce the performance of the whole system. You may not be able to stop. So we need to make sure we get this all the way bled out. We're gonna remove the cap. Make sure you have the cap off when bleeding because it can actually suck the uh, rubber uh, seal right out of the cap so we're going to get that off and then we just want to fill this up all the way i've already got it topped up and we're using dot three brake fluid so we're going to head back to the wheels at the back but we're going to need an assistant here at the front to actu actuate the actuator here there's two ways they could do that they could pull the breakaway switch pin that's going to turn the system on or you could hook it up to your truck and you could use the manual slide on your uh, brake controller to activate the system so let's head back to the wheel now and we're going to get those blood out so we're starting here at the furthest wheel from our actuator. So our actuator is located on the front a little bit towards the driver's side and our line runs down the driver's side. So that makes this the farthest from that. If you start at the furthest, that means you're gonna get the majority of your lines bled just from this one. And you only really are just doing the short distance that goes to each caliber from there. So this will speed up your bleeding process. So back here at the wheel, we've got our, our tire off. We've got our new systems installed. You've got two sets of bleeder screws on your caliper here. We want to make sure we're using the one that's at the top. You can ignore this one at the bottom. We won't need that for anything. This is going to squirt out with pretty high pressure. So I recommend you have a clear hose here so you can see inside the hose to verify if you've got air bubbles or a solid stream coming out. And just poke that right over it. You can then have the hose go down into any kind of container. We're just using an old uh, drinking bottle here that we drilled a hole in the top. But you can just use a pan. A pan would work fine. Uh, do keep in mind though that high pressure uh, we kind of poked it down through the cap because if it's just in a pan, it can kind of whip around a little bit because of that high pressure. We'll then take our 5 16 wrench that's going to fit on our bleeder here. And we're going to have our assistant go ahead and turn on the system. So it's pressurized. We can hear it. We're going to crack it loose and we're just going to let fluid flow. You can go ahead and turn it off until we get a nice solid stream just like this. What you're seeing down here, this is feeding back up, but if you see these bubbles like this coming out of our hose, you're not done yet. You want to have a solid stream coming out. Once you've got a solid stream coming out of this one, you want to make sure you go back up to your actuator and top it off because it does push through the fluid pretty fast. And if the system goes dry when bleeding, you have to start all the way over from the very beginning. So we're going to top it up up front and then we're just going to move on to the next wheel over here and continue on repeating this process at each wheel until you've got a solid stream coming out of each one. Once you're all done, you can then reinstall your cap and we're ready to hook up to our truck and hit the road. And that completes our installation of HydroStar's disc brake actuator on our 2021 Family Beacon.